Hey guys, welcome back, Orbom here, and I am your coach of the Houstonian Hoopas. Now, before I say anything, first of all, shout outs to Bryce's Gamings 101 for the, uh, for the screen, for the background, as you guys can see, it's pretty nice. He threw it together in like five minutes, he's amazing. But, uh, it's a post-com. I tried my best to do it live, and I did. It took three days to get in the right situation, and even then it was a really, really, really loud house, but I managed to edit it out a little bit, and I managed to record it live, and then my computer blue screened, and I lost all my recordings, all my videos. That's why you guys have seen a lot less content on the channel in the past two weeks. It's unfortunate. To say the least, I really, really liked playing it live. It was a really interesting battle, to say the least. But yeah, we are battling Morph, um, Nyx of the Brisbane Bagons. You guys saw the prep video. Well, there was a problem. And the problem is that the team didn't transfer correctly. Landorus only had three attacks. It didn't have explosion for some reason during that match. And I didn't notice it until like pretty late in the match. So I never had a reason to use it. And then, uh, what's his name? Um, Mega Glalie ended up having Protect over Earthquake because apparently it never changed. So it's fine though. Uh, match was still really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. So let's see what we got against the team. And uh, team preview didn't show up but as you can see he brought Heatran who was what we were really scared about Electivire who I didn't think was going to be uh who didn't I didn't think he was gonna show up but he did uh Reuniclus who we knew was going to show up or at least I personally knew him of course Mega P uh, Venus <laughs> Mega Pinsir I want to say Venusaur for whatever reason he brought Gigalith to set up rocks and then Frostlass I'm not sure what the Frostlass wanted to do but it was there and then you guys already know our team from the team builder episode so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna put this on nice and slow Oh, yeah, I'll put it slow so I can talk. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and resume the video. All right, so he's going to start with Protect, which is unfortunate because I really wanted to taunt this thing. Oh, man, it's moving. The thing's moving really slow. I'm going to put it on normal. I really wanted to taunt this thing, but he protected on the taunt, so now he knows I have the taunt. So I just wanted to taunt him again because I really, really want him to go for Earthquake. I'm going to go ahead and pause so I can explain myself. I really wanted him to go for Earthquake to take me down to my Sash. He went for Rock Slide, though, which in retrospect does more damage than Earthquake after Stab, I think. Maybe not. Um, uh, but it didn't take me down to Satch, which is really annoying, because I wanted to endeavor mock punch this thing. Um, but yeah, so here I decided to switch out. I already taunted him, so he couldn't get up rocks. I go into Landorus, I intimidate this man, then he goes for Rock Slide again, and that did a lot of damage. I'm starting to wonder if my Landorus even had EVs, but yeah, that did a lot of damage, and the Earthquake did over 50%, which is a big thing. And then he red carded me into the Infernape and knocked me out. Which is already just like, wow, that was a good roll for him. Anybody else would have been fine, except for Glalie. But um, the, these, the two birds would have been fine, and then I know for a fact Hector can at least eat two of them, unless he gets crits. So, that was unfortunate, but I lost my Infernape really early in the match. <laughs> and so his taunt wears off, so I'm forced to go into Landris here, just so I can make sure that he can't get up rocks. I don't want rocks up. I really, really don't. And then he goes into Reuniclus. So I go for Earthquake because he has absolutely nothing that will eat up an Earthquake, except for Reuniclus. This thing's max defense, as it tells me. So I go into Togekiss here, because Togekiss is meant to counter this thing, as he goes for Calm Mind. So I'm already just like, nope, going for my Air Slash Flinches, because that's what I do. It's a 60% chance to flinch. Uh, that's what you do with Togekiss. He's trying to flinch away. It's my only way to really beat this thing. So I decided to go for Thunder Wave, because I don't... I mean, Thunder Wave is the best thing to get on this thing. I don't want to accidentally burn it or Toxic it later, especially since I know it has Magic Guard. Uh, Psy Shock here, which is already scary enough because as you guys know I'm max for death, not physically defensive. So I get an Air Slash crit here, which is amazing for me, but he gets another Psy Shock off, which is really unfortunate. So I have to start roosting until he gets fully parried, so I'm at enough HP to survive just in case. And luckily for me, he does get fully parried that first time. So now I'm good to go for Air Slash flinches again. <clears throat> so I go for Air Slash here, and I get the flinch, which is phenomenal. Sorry, I am a little bit ahead. And then I go for it again. Um, trying to get the flinch so I can go for another one but luckily enough I get a crit here so I don't have to worry about going for two more air slashes working any misses or not flinches or anything like that as he goes into Electivire now here I go into Zapdos because Zapdos is my physical wall and really walls this thing but it goes for Ice Punch now this tells me that he's definitely choice banded that did way too much damage but he gets the freeze I don't know if you guys saw that he's saying I'm sorry here you guys can't see that part though 
he gets the freeze on Zapdos, which is really, 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 really bad because I need Zapdos to help counter that pincer. Uh, but it's okay. I switch it out because I figured I can heal Bella later. I go into Glalie because I know I can eat up an Ice Punch, even if it's Choice Bandit. It's still resisted. I have Mega Evolve here, and here I'm, I was trying to go for Earthquake, but I have Protect. And I went for Protect just to make sure that he was Choice, and he ended up switching out on me, which was a good play on his part. If I had Earthquake, that would have been so much better. So I go into Landorus here, just intimidate him again, um, as he goes for Stealth Rock finally, which is unfortunate. But I can defog them, I'm not too worried about it. I thought he would switch out here, so I went for U-turn. He ended up staying in, so I go into Cacturn, because it's really my only safe switch. As like I said before, Cacturn can definitely eat up those Rock Slides. So here I go for the Sword Dance, protecting him to protect or switch out, as he does protect. And now I'm going to get back a little bit of HP by going for Drain Punch. Um, it gets me a little bit more after the uh, Life Orb damage. But here I'm just like, but here... Here he goes into Heatran, which was interesting to me. I don't know why he didn't go into Pinsir. I was thinking that maybe Pinsir didn't have Quick Attack at this point. Because I can easily knock out Heatran with a Sucker Punch. I know it's fully offensive because it just got knocked down in one hit. And he doesn't have any reason to have any sort of like defensive variance on that thing. So here I just go for another Sucker Punch. I figured this thing might have Sash, but I don't need Cacturn anymore at this point. So, um, yeah, he goes Ice Beam me, he knocks me out. But here I decide to take advantage of it. I know I can eat one or two Ice Beams with my Togekiss. So I switch in to go for my Heal Bell. And here's the crazy part. He freezes me on my Heal Bell. Okay, let's, let's talk about this for one second. I got frozen on my Heal Bell. The Heal Bell I was using to heal up Zapdos from being frozen. My team has two frozen birds in it right now. That is incredibly unfortunate. Especially considering how I needed Zapdos to take down the elect to take down the Pincer whenever it comes down to it, because I can take I can easily take out the rest of his team uh, with Landorus, but I don't have Explosion, so I can't touch that Pincer after Mega Evolves. So there's that. So I, I know I have Landorus for the other two Mons, and um, Tokikiss is here to heal Bell, and he couldn't do it because he got frozen, which is incredibly unfortunate. But let's continue with the match. Uh. I don't want Tokikis to die just in case uh, for whatever reason. So let's try to Glady because I know I can survive an Ice Beam. Here I can just Ice Shard this thing. Um, as he goes into... He's going to, he goes into Electivire here. And because I know he was banded and I EB this thing that outspeed Electivire, I went for Protect because I wanted to see what he would go for in case I have a safe switch with any of my other Mons. And I just had to go for Double Edge. It sacked myself off, but it was a, it was my only way to really kill that Zapdos right away without making any of my other Pokemon fainted. And here, okay, here's the crazy part. Here's where the things happen. As you guys know, I have absolutely nothing to touch with Pinsir with anymore. Um, my attacks with um, Landorus, I don't remember. It was Earthquake, uh, Stone Edge, U-Turn, and I forgot what my fourth move was. Oh, there was no Stone Edge. That's right. Actually, let me let me double check that. Let me do a quick pause. Oh yeah, so just what I thought, it was it was U-Turn, ex Earthquake, Explosion, Knockoff, but I didn't have Explosion on the set, so I was only those three moves, and none of those moves can really take out the uh, Pinsir. So, yeah, I had to go into Zapdos, hoping that he wouldn't set up on a Pokemon that can, you know, one-shot it. I don't care what you're, you guys saw my team builder, I EV'd it to where I could, I could always Oko it, um after Rocky Helmet damage, no matter what the case, um, with Thunderbolt. But, he decides to go for Swords Dance after he Mega Evolves, and I'm like, oh no, whoops, that's my phone, sorry about that guys, that's my phone, uh, he, I'm still frozen, and he goes for it again to guarantee the kill, and Zapdos is still frozen, and at that point, that's the game. He just goes for a turn there, uh, Rocky Helmet damage, he does take it, but it's not going to be enough, and he can just go for Quick Attack to knock out my Landorus, and that is a week one loss for your Houstonian Hoopas. I'm sorry guys. Like I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to discredit Morph. I'm sure Morph is a Morph is a good battler. Everybody in the league is a great battler, but um, sometimes it doesn't matter <laughs> how well you battle, how well you play. Hacks is always a factor of Pokemon, which is why I always tell everybody I ever meet, I don't that are always discouraged about playing Pokemon. It doesn't matter who you are. Pokemon is 70% skill, 30% hacks, in my opinion. So, as you can see here, it's a pretty solid example how sometimes hacks can make you lose the game. But, good game, Morph. It was really, really fun. I, this guy is so great. He worked with me so hard to make sure I could do live commentary, and I'm sorry that in the end I couldn't do it for you, Morph. 
but thank you so much for working with me and thank you for joining this league that we created me and me and Fugio. and yeah week one guys we're gonna bounce back for week two and um be sure to come back tomorrow from a channel we are going to have an espn style of weekly uh, I guess weekly coverage of everyone's battles and teams and their trades and everything we're going to do. So be sure to tune into that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to support your Houstonian Hoopas by dropping a like, subscribing, sharing. Let me know how I could have played this game battle in the, uh, better in the comments below. Let me know what Pokemon would have been better to bring to this kind of style. And uh, yeah, all that stuff. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.